was declining. Uh, and he could extrapolate that to figure out how much oil there would be altogether. The amount that you discover initially starts out rising very rapidly, but after a while it slows down because there's less of it to, to, to discover, and eventually it will turn over and come back down again like that. Now the rate of production of oil, of extraction or use of oil, will be a second bell-shaped curve, and it comes necessarily later than this because you have to discover it before you can produce it. So there'll be a second curve like this for production, and it too will eventually go to zero. And this peak here, the peak in the production curve, is what's referred to as Hubbard's Peak. If we've only produced about 50 billion barrels in 100 years, and if we have 100 billion barrels still to go, which is twice that amount, uh, when will there first, when, how long will it be before there's an oil shortage? The U.S. will hit the peak of oil production in about 10 or 15 years from that date. When 1970 came along, sure enough, it happened just as he said it would. It turns out that in December 1970, the U.S. peaked at 10.2 million barrels a day, and then oil prices went through the roof. We went on a drilling boom of epic proportion. Ten years later, we were drilling and completing four and a half times more oil wells than we were doing back when we peaked, and our domestic oil production from the lower 48 and the shallow waters of the Outer Continental Shelf had already declined from 10.2 million barrels a day to 6.9 million barrels a day. It doesn't sound terribly illogical. If we've been living on more oil consumed every year than we found for 30 years, uh, I guess it's inevitable that sooner or later we were going to reach that. The last great frontiers of new oil discoveries turned out to be Alaskan North Slope oil, Siberian oil, and the North Sea. And those discoveries happened in kind of 1968, 69, 1967, 68, and 69. Finding oil in the North Sea was a big surprise. No, no one could reasonably have expected that. Our famous Lady Thatcher came to power. She said, we want initiative and enterprise and enthusiasm and competition and all these things. And sure enough, everybody went to produce oil as fast as they knew how. But there's a strange irony relating to this subject that the better you do the job of exploiting oil and gas, the sooner it is gone. The British government now admits that it becomes a net importer next year, I think, and that it's gone in 2020. This is a huge change. So to imagine that there's anywhere mist as big as the North Sea is, is just implausible. As we look around the world into other countries, we see this same pattern being repeated in one country after another. Today, there's about 58 countries that are physically producing less today than they have in the past. has now been sufficiently explored for the oil industry to know now all the promising areas. All the big promising areas have been identified. We're always a drill bit away from some fabulous new territory. That's the great thing about exploration. But realistically, it's been a long, long period of time uh, since we've actually discovered a significant new basin. 
I am hopeful and optimistic about the, uh, the way innovation, scientific technology, and oil uh, uh, engineers can continue finding more oil. I love hearing all these economists say, well, technology and ingenuity will bring out all these changes. And I say, give me a break. I do know oil field technology backwards and forwards, and the blackboard is dry. And it took 30 to 35 years to develop all of these great tools. We already have fantastic technology to find oil. We have seismic surveys, which are of unbelievable resolution. You can see the smallest formations in the Earth's crust. We have very advanced engineering to produce oil. And all of these great tools that, that ended up being great enhanced production techniques were basically super straws, just sucking the last easy oil out of the ground at faster rates, and to no extent significantly increasing the amount of oil that was going to be produced from a significant oil field. That was all myth. Some oil is cheap, easy, fast to produce. Others is the exact opposite. There's a, a big difference between producing oil from a free-flowing well in the Middle East that just comes roaring out and digging up a tar sand in Canada, which is more or less a mining operation. They're using more energy from natural gas to produce the oil than they're getting from oil shales and tar sands. So even the fact that people are, are saying, well, we're gonna tap the oil sands, that right there tells you that we're close to peaking because you don't go to those areas unless you've used up all the good stuff. Two-thirds of the oil reserves are in the Middle East, which means basically the Persian Gulf. Uh, and that's 10 times as much as any other source. Right now, really the only region of the world that hasn't peaked is the Middle East. serious projections for 2030 envision the Middle East producing 50, 51 million barrels a day. We know that Iran peaked at 6 million barrels a day back in 1978, struggles to stay between 3 and 3.5 and million barrels a day. Kuwait struggles to keep their 2.5 million barrels a day intact. They keep, maybe we can add a half million barrels a day. Maybe the UAE can add a half million barrels a day. So to get there, you would have to have Saudi Arabia be producing between 20 and 25 million or even 30 million barrels a day. Those days are long gone. You know, up to 15 million barrels a day is now their sort of new magic number for 50, 75, even 100 years. There are other powerful voices within Saudi Arabia that are clearly sending the message out. Uh, 12 million barrels a day, yeah, that's probably okay, but it, we really shouldn't even think about producing any more than that, ever. They had an intense exploration effort for the last 35 years, and with the exception of one field, the Hata field, that's the only significant exploration success they had from 1967 through 2005. If Saudi Arabia has now exceeded their sustainable peak supply, then I would argue with some clarity that the world has now exceeded sustainable peak supply. When you read 
reach the peak, you're at the top of the mountain. Sometimes down the other side is very, very gradual slide, and other times down the other side is fairly stiff. What really matters, and matters enormously, is the view that comes into sight on the other side of this peak when we see this long, relentless, remorseless decline heading off into the valley. The point is that the whole world has got used to this growing side of the, the mountain range, has to face the opposite side. We have moved now to the point in which uh, virtually everyone accepts that there is a peak. M. King Hubbard had predicted that worldwide it should be occurring about the turn of the century. That slipped a little because of the Arab oil embargo and the oil price spike hikes and the worldwide recession that reduced the demand for oil quite significantly. And it's now pushed peak oil off till many people believe about now. We are coming to the end of the first half of the age of oil. During this 150 years, we have seen the growth of everything, of industry, transport, trade, agriculture. We've seen an explosion of the number of people. All of this was made possible by the cheap, abundant supply of oil-based energy. Demand is on the march, and supply is flattening out. You will have to supply, if you want to meet the demand, from the current level of 80 million barrels a day to 120 million barrels a day in year 2030. But in order to meet that profile, you would have to add new oil in the amount of 200 million barrels a day, because a lot of that new oil will have to go to compensate for the depletion of existing wells. early 70s, over half the globe essentially didn't use any oil. The only serious oil consumers were Europe, not an awful lot in Japan, the United States, Canada, and the former Soviet Union. Africa didn't use any oil of any volume. Middle East didn't use any oil. None of Asia used any oil other than Japan. Today, Papua New Guinea hardly uses any oil. There's probably two or three islands in the South Pacific that don't use any oil. Everybody else is hooked on trying to create a society that looks like us. The demand for energy is rising faster than was predicted even five years ago. So people all around the world can see the way the developed countries of the world live and how a good a life the people have in those areas. So they want to emulate us. They want to be able to drive cars. They want to live in nice houses. They want to have air conditioning and refrigeration. And, and why shouldn't they? Demand for energy will only increase as India's standard of living rises, its economy becomes even more diverse and dynamic, and it continues to narrow the gap with more developed nations. <laughs>